Okay, so to evaluate this limit here, what we're first going to do is find a closed form expression for this sum right here, okay? And that's going to be in terms of n, and then we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity. So to find a closed form expression for this, we're going to start by foiling this 1 plus 2i over n raised to the second power. So we have 1 plus 2 times 1 times 2i over n, so that's 4i over n, plus 2i over n quantity squared. So that's 4i squared over n squared. Now since this 2 over n doesn't have an i in it, it's considered a constant as far as the sum goes, so we can pull it in front of the sigma notation. We can't pull it out of the limit, though, because it has an n in it, and the limit is sending n to infinity. Okay, now we're going to rewrite this sum here using the property that if you're summing three different things together, it's the same as summing those three different things individually and adding the results. So we have the sum from 1 to n of 1, plus the sum from 1 to n of 4i over n, plus the sum from 1 to n of 4i squared over n squared. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these constants and pull them in front of their individual sigmas. We have 4 over n times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of i plus 4 over n squared times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of i squared. Okay, now we're going to evaluate the individual sums. So we have 2 over n times the sum from 1 to n of 1 is 1 plus 1 plus 1, and so on, n times. Okay, so it's 1 times n, or just n, plus 4 over n times the sum from 1 to n of i, and that's just equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. Then plus 4 over n squared, times the sum from 1 to n of i squared, and that is just n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. Okay, so now we just clean this up a bit. So we have n plus here, these n's cancel, so we have 4 times n plus 1 divided by 2. Actually, let me just go ahead and cancel the 4 and the 2. So this 2 goes away, but not like that. This 2 goes away and takes 2 of that, uh, 4 is 2 times 2, so we're left with a 2 there. So here we have 2 times n plus 1. Here, um, let's see, this n goes away, and it takes one of those with it. 2 goes into 4 2 times, and it goes into 6 3 times. So we have 2 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 3n. Okay, next we distribute the 2 over n. And we get 2 over n times n, that's 2. 2 over n times 2 times n plus 1 is 4 times n plus 1 divided by n. Then plus, we multiply the 2, we get 4 
n plus 1, 2n plus 1, divided by 3n times another n gives us n squared. Okay, so now we should multiply this n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. If we do, we get 2n squared plus n plus 2n, that's plus 3n plus 1. So we have the limit, and we're almost done. I know this is long, but we're almost done. The limit is n goes to infinity of 2 plus 4n plus 4 divided by n plus 4 times this trinomial here, so we get 8n squared plus 12n plus 4 divided by 3n squared. Okay, so now we are ready to take the limit. So, as n goes to infinity, this plus 4 is insignificant, so we can ignore it. This gives us 4n divided by n, which the n's can cancel and we get just 4. Over here, the 12n and the 4 are insignificant because n is going to infinity and the n squared in the numerator is going to way overpower these guys. So that gives us 8n squared over 3n squared, which is just 8 over 3. So here, the value of the limit is 2 plus 4 plus 8 over 3. So if we get a common denominator here, we have 6 plus 12 plus 8 divided by 3. That gives us 26 divided by 3. So, the value of this limit here is equal to 26 divided by 3. And you'll get to learn soon 